Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here with the Eclectic Reader book tag. This tag was originally created by my friend Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly, and she was also the one who tagged me. I will of course link her original video down below, and I'm super excited to do this. Um, as you guys probably know, if you are watching this channel, I am a very <laughs> eclectic reader. Um, I read all over the place. I really enjoy reading widely, and I think that's really important. Um, and I definitely think it sometimes makes it hard to come up with a like concrete reading brand. <laughs> so let's get into the questions. There are a few uh, kind of introductory questions and then the majority of the tag is talking about five specific subgenres or combinations that you enjoy. So the first question is where do you get your book recommendations? And definitely the majority is booktube unsurprisingly um, or book bloggers that I follow and I do sometimes get them from Goodreads also not like their actual recommendations feature but I've had pretty good luck with the ones where like you're on the book page and then it says readers also enjoyed or something like that. Um, I have found a couple of like similar authors to authors that I really enjoy so I do that I do like that um, but definitely the majority is booktube and book bloggers. Number two is how do you decide what to read next and this answer has kind of changed recently as I have mentioned several times before. Um, I'm doing kind of an experiment this year where I'm not doing any set TBRs except for a couple of specific cases so normally I would kind of do a combination of like what books I have on my TBR and then like maybe some things I'm kind of in the mood for. Um, but right now it's like mainly mood reading. Um, although I will say since I'm a multi-reader I kind of like to balance out the kinds of books I'm reading. So for example I might have one book that I'm reading for a book club that's going. Um, I might have one book that is kind of taking me a while to get through, like maybe one I'm not enjoying as much but I don't want to DNF. Obviously I don't intend to have one of those going all the time but I try to limit myself to just one of those at a time. And then maybe one book that's like purely a mood read but like all of these categories can also overlap um, and there can be different categories but that's just kind of an example. Number three is how has your reading tastes changed over time? And I definitely have gotten like my reading tastes have gotten broader as I got older which is actually really exciting. Um, I don't think I've ever like grown out of something. Like I only add genres that I enjoy which I think is really good. Um, I'm really I'm really happy about that. Like for example I was not like I was not like particularly into middle grade when I was actually in the age range. Like obviously I read books in that age range and I enjoyed some of them but it wasn't something that I like specifically knew that I enjoyed or I was specifically passionate about whereas now that is something I'm very passionate about. I read adult, middle grade, and YA and I just think having a combination of those things is really really important um, and I enjoy doing that. Um, I also like I never thought that I would be reading as much nonfiction as I am now um, which is really exciting. Like I think for a long time I had the assumption that nonfiction has to be boring for it to be worthwhile or for it to teach you something. Um, like if it didn't read like a textbook I felt like well I'm not re I'm not really learning you know um, but once I started really finding the particular kinds of nonfiction that I enjoy I've discovered that I really really enjoy it. Um, I think there's a lot of important nonfiction books out there and I've been really enjoying like reading more of those. I also have found that I can really enjoy magical realism or fabulism. Um, still like relatively picky with that, like obviously I love Anna Marie Macklemore um, and there are a couple other examples that I have really enjoyed but so it's still not like a most read genre for me but it is definitely one that I really enjoy, like I, I can really enjoy which I never thought would happen. And of course the genre that I read most of and was kind of like the genre I fell in love with first is definitely fantasy. I still read a lot of fantasy um, and also historical fiction. I think when I was younger I didn't read as much historical fiction as I do now um, but I definitely had some that I really enjoyed when I was a kid that were kind of formative for me and I continue to love historical fiction now. Number four, what genres or subgenres do you never or usually never read? Um, so th one of the only ones that I would say I never read is like erotica for example because um, I'm pretty picky about like the romance genre in general and I, I'm very very picky about the way that sex scenes are written so like it doesn't like it wouldn't be enjoyable to me to read a genre that is like primarily focused around the smut. And I also very very rarely read horror, like almost never, like one of the only examples I can think of is Mexican Gothic which I did love but like I'm very very particular. I don't tend to enjoy that genre as a whole and I'm not really looking to read more of it <laughs> except in again those like certain cases that I do think I would enjoy. Okay and then questions five through nine are what are five specific subgenres that you enjoy? Include a recommendation or two for each one. So my first subgenre is baking magic. Um, several of these thus you're probably not going to be surprised about. Um, but I have of course the Love Sugar Magic series by Ana Mariano. This is the Dash of Trouble um, and Leonora is our main character and her family are cocinera brujas so they're cooking or baking witches. 
Um, I just really love this series. I have talked about it at length, so I'll try not to go into too much detail with it with some of these. Um, also, Midsummer's Mayhem by Rajani LaRocca. Our main character is Mimi, and um, this is a middle grade retelling of A Midsummer Night's Dream, which I also love. We're getting a companion book that I'm very excited about. Um, and of course, I really enjoy the baking magic in this one as well. And then this is a recent read, and the baking magic is definitely a subplot, but it is there, and I did enjoy it. And it's a book and author that I love. Um, and that is The Mere Season by Anna Marie McLemore. Again, the baking magic is a relatively small subplot. The majority of the book is about sexual assault, so um, be mindful of that going in. But our main female character, um, her family does own a bakery, and she kind of has this special power of being able to tell exactly what pastry somebody needs and how that's going to help them in their life. Um, so I do really enjoy that element, although again there's a lot of other things happening in this book as well. I also really enjoy historical fantasy in general, but I wanted to pick a particular kind of historical fantasy. Um, and the one I picked is like historical fantasy that's basically... it feels a little bit like Jane Austen plus magic. Um, that's something I really enjoy. And one of them is a series I have been really gushing about lately, and that is The Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman. Um, I just really enjoy the writing. I think this has a really good amount of historical detail. Like, I don't think... like, maybe maybe if you've, like, never read a historical fiction book before, there, you might have some questions about it, but I think overall this is... this would be, like, a very accessible histor historical book. Um, I think the magic elements are interesting. I love our main character. I love the romance, and the romance has a little bit... like, a tiny tinge of, like, Elizabeth and Darcy. Um, although I think... I don't think you have to love Elizabeth and Darcy in order to enjoy their romance. Um, but yeah, I just have been really enjoying that series. And also, if you want something that's a little bit more like fantasy comedy of manners, um, Sorcery and Cecilia by Patricia C. Reedy and Caroline Stevermer. Uh, this is just like a really fun, light book, and it's really funny. I really love the relationship between our main characters. I think they're cousins. Um, I think that it's just like a lot of fun, and um, I really enjoy the writing of that one. That one's also an epistolary novel, uh, but I don't think like, I think if that's nor not normally something you enjoy, I don't think that would be off-putting. Next, I want to talk about fantasy books that are, like, vaguely Italian-inspired. Um, I like, in general, fantasy books that are inspired by different countries, but I decided I wanted to highlight some Italian ones. Um, one of those is a series that I have loved for a while now. That is the Stravaganza books. This is City of Masks, the first book, and it's by Mary Hoffman. Um, I just really enjoy these books. I think they have a really great cast of characters. Um, I like the kind of side relationships in this series as well. Um, and this series follows... each book follows a different kid from our world who um, has something serious going on in their life, and because of that they end up... Um, like, those are the kids who get selected to, like, get transported to this world called Talia, I think? So it's, like, not quite Italy, but it's very similar. Um, and I just, like, really enjoy this series. I like the setting, I enjoy the characters. Um, it's one of those series where, like, I... some of the books I do really love the main characters, and some of them I don't as much, but even if I don't love the main characters, there's enough, like, side characters I love that I still, like, really enjoy those books. So, um, yeah, really enjoy that series. That one's kind of an older one relatively speaking. Um, and then also the Magical Venice series by Holly Webb. I have talked about these a lot lately. Um, this is the Water Horse book one, and this takes place in a magical version of Venice. And the, one of the things that I have talked about this series before is I really appreciate the balance of the light fun elements with the darker elements in these books. Um, they're definitely handled, I think, with a light hand, but there is quite a bit of like darker stuff going on underneath. Like um, this book starts out with our main girl, figuring out that she has been essentially mind-controlled for the majority of her life by somebody that she trusted, um, so, which is like, you know, a pretty scary way to start off a book. Um, but yeah, again, I really like the magic, I really like the characters, I really appreciate the way that the themes are handled and like incorporated into the story, and again, I just think those are balanced with the fun elements really well. And I also want to mention Foundryside by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is a fairly popular fantasy book. Um, I feel like a lot of people have already read this one or know about it. Um, I read it kind of late, but I did enjoy it. Um, this one is definitely like, the, the Italian-esque setting is not super prominent, but it is a book I enjoyed and I did think the setting was fun. It is one of those, though, that, like, if you know even just, like, a little bit of Italian, it can actually make it kind of confusing trying to, like... like, they use, like, words that are not quite right in some cases, and that kind of threw me off with some of the, like, setting for a while. Um, but overall I did enjoy the setting and I really liked the heist element of this book. I grew to really enjoy the characters and I really love the magic system in this one. It's almost like programming a little bit. Um, so I just found that fascinating and I did enjoy this book. Although again, it's kind of like... like the Italian elements are like much lighter, but I did want to talk about this book, so I put it in this category. Next I have historical fiction plus time travel, um, which is funny because 
I don't like time travel science fiction books usually. Um, it's actually like one of my least favorite tropes I feel like. But when it's combined with historical fiction I actually really enjoy it. Like when somebody from our time or approximately our time um, goes back in time to another era. I just find that super interesting and that's for a few different reasons. Um, one example is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. This is another very very popular book and I also thought it was fantastic. Um, our main character Dana, I think this is, I think she's from the 70s which was the current day when this was written, um, and she gets transported back in time to the antebellum south which is obviously incredibly dangerous for her as a black woman. Um, and the time travel in this one I think serves a couple of purposes. It's definitely not super explained so if that's what you like about time travel you might not like that element of this book but I thought this was fantastic. Um, I think the time travel brings up some really really interesting questions about um, like personal responsibility and how much people can change and I think it also brings into sharp relief um, the differences between Dana's world that she is from and the way that she is treated in the past. Um, so I think it has like a very I guess practical use in that way as well but um, yeah this is just like a really incredible book and it's one I would highly recommend even if you're not a fan of time travel because I loved it and I'm not. <laughs> And then another reason that I can really like this like historical fiction time travel mashup um, is because I think in some cases it can just create this really compelling and interesting um, like drama, like not drama in a superficial sense, but like you have built in conflict because you have this character who is attached to this completely different time. They have people they know and love in this time and then they're in a different time and they of course start forming relationships there and I just think that that is like so interesting and so compelling and I just it's I just like really think that conflict is very compelling. Um, I've said that word a lot, I know, but one of them is No Good Deed by Cara Connolly or Cara Connolly. I never know how to say it when it's not spelled the way I <laughs> the way I spell mine. Um, and this is a Robin Hood-esque kind of retelling and our main character um, she ends up getting transported back in time to the time of Robin Hood um, and this is a book that like I, I don't hear people talk about very much and I think there's some aspects of it that I think um, maybe would be polarizing for people, but I really enjoyed it. This was also an example of like a book I really needed at the time that I read it. Um, I just like really enjoyed our main character. I really enjoyed the character she met in the past. Again, there was that built-in conflict that I found very compelling, um, and I think the ending was really interesting as well. I still like there's some things I liked and some things I didn't, but I think it really fit the story. Um, and yeah, I just like really enjoyed this book. And then another example of this is What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon. This was actually a gift from my friend Olivia Savannah and I really enjoyed this. Um, in this one our main character is sent, sent back in time to 1921 um, in Ireland, so shortly after the Easter Rising. And I, I actually, it's funny because this is a book I talked about where like the thing I was excited about was the time travel historical fiction like conflict and the things that I loved about this book most were not that. Like I really loved the setting of Ireland, I really really loved some of the side characters and the way that the author writes about the desperation of the Irish people as they're fighting to be free and independent from the British crown and like I just found those aspects so so compelling. Um, I really loved the family elements and I just really loved a lot of things about this book. I did also enjoy like the central romance and like the central like character dynamics that I that I talked about for this category, um, but the things that really shone about this one were other aspects which was kind of interesting. And I also want to mention The Girl with the Red Balloon by Catherine Locke. Um, this one is a shorter time jump than a lot of the ones I've been talking about. Our main character is transported back in time, um, I don't remember the year, okay 1988. Um, so at this time East Berlin and West Berlin were still divided by the Berlin Wall. Um, and this can be a very very intense book as well because we follow several points of view. One of them is during World War II, during the Holocaust, so definitely be aware of that going in. Um, but our main character Ali is the one who gets transported back to 1988. And for one thing it was very interesting to read in that time period because that's not a time period I don't think I don't think I had ever read historical fiction books set in that time before, so that was really interesting. Um, and I grew really, really attached to all of these characters as well, and I think the setting was described very well. Um, I think this is definitely a very emotional and intense book in places, like I mentioned, um, but I did think it was fantastically well executed, and I think the the conflict Ellie feels between going home and, you know, being attached to the people that she is with, like in 1988, I think that was explored really, really well also. Okay, so I had to stop in the middle of filming and come back, so probably things look different, um, but I think I was almost done. So the last category I wanted to talk about is nonfiction books that are about the history and politics of makeup and beauty. I find that fascinating, um, and the one that really like started this interest um, is Beauty and Cosmetics 1550 to 1950 by Sarah Jane Downing, um, and this is like historical 
um, not like timeline exactly, but it's like throughout different eras, like what the view on makeup was and like what kind of makeup was, um, had been develop developed or like was common. Um, so I really enjoyed that one. It's got some like really cool like illustrations as well. Um, and then also, like I have like multiple versions of these, I'm only mentioning a few, um, but the double biography that is War Paint, Madame Helena Rubinstein and Miss Elizabeth Arden, Their Lives, Their Times, Their Rivalry by Lindy Woodhead. Um, I really enjoyed this as well and this I would also put in this category even though it's more like biographically focused. Um, and then the other one that I want to mention is actually a present from my friend Yvette at Book Cave. Um, and that is Classic Beauty, The History of Makeup by Gabriela Hernandez. This is the second edition and this is like a really, really cool book. And again, this one goes through different eras. It features a lot of like, um, like different like photographs and um, it talks about like different iconic looks and like different makeup um, technology and like products and things. And I just find this like, a super interesting topic. Um, I think that even today there's like a tendency for some people to think of makeup as like a very superficial interest, um, like it's very shallow, and it's not. It's like this really important um, way that some people choose to express themselves. And there's a really fascinating history behind it, and like the politics of the beauty industry is really interesting, and like the way that the way that that has been used in different eras and different societies um, to portray a certain ideal is really interesting, and um, yeah, I just think that historically and politically and artistically it's a really fascinating topic and I really enjoy reading about it. Okay everybody, so that was the Eclectic Reader book tag. Thank you so much Kelly for tagging me. I really really enjoyed doing this. Um, I'm going to tag a few people in the description box who I think would enjoy doing this who I think also have somewhat eclectic reading tastes. Um, also, I wanted to mention that these earrings I think are so cute. They are from BB Pins. I will link their shop down below and I actually heard about them from Annalisa Ely so I'm very glad she mentioned them. But yeah, comment down below and let me know a very specific subgenre that you enjoy. Also let me know if you have any recommendations in any of these categories I mentioned. I would love to read more books like these. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!